Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is the Weather Extreme Video, the morning edition for Thursday, April 11th. I'm James Spann. Very active weather today with a severe weather threat. Let's see if we can answer all of your questions. So we'll start with, say, a look at some of the Skycam shots around the network early this morning, as we usually do. Let's look at Regents Field. Played their first game ever there last night, opening night. Weather was great, nice and warm, and I think everything went off pretty well. Things are quiet there this morning. That's the uh, Tuscaloosa Sky Cam. And up in Huntsville, looks like about four cars on Memorial Parkway at that insane early hour. Okay, anytime you see a look like that, you know there's trouble in the cards. Uh, this is the uh, satellite view, and on top of that, the Height lines at 500 millibars. Big trough over the nation's midsection. Upper low in the core of that over Nebraska. And accordingly, we've got a huge thermal contrast. Ahead of the cold front, temperatures are very mild with readings surging up into the 60s and 70s, even at the you know pre-dawn hours. And back in the cold air, you've got teens and 20s with a big blanket of snow on the ground. And that cold front is just around Memphis, Tennessee and uh, near that front, we've got a band of showers and storms. This was the radar grab at 448 this morning. And uh, as expected, it's been moving just very slowly overnight. There's no severe weather early this morning. Uh, no wa severe weather watches or warnings. There's a, a flash flood warning in effect for some of the counties down in the Mississippi Delta. But, of course, the air is stable early this morning, but that will change later today. There's the watch warning map. Uh, we've got flash flood watches up for a pretty good chunk of Mississippi and parts of western Tennessee. Up north, still winter storm warnings. Parts of South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. It's the winter that will just not go away for those folks. But, of course, we'll focus on the severe weather threat. Now, this is the early morning convective outlook. They might change this by the time you watch this, but as of uh, 5 o'clock this morning, it is the standard slight risk for basically all 67 Alabama counties. doesn't matter which one you live in. Uh, the risk extends into the adjacent states and up as far north as uh, Cincinnati, Charlotte, Asheville, Raleigh, North Carolina, and all the way down to near uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, in terms of the severe wind possibilities, the, the guys have actually brought the numbers down a little bit. You know, yesterday they brought it up to 45%. They brought it down to 30% over most of Alabama except the northwestern corner. The tornado probabilities are 5%, and that's standard. Understand, tornado is a very tiny uh, you know, event, and the odds of being hit by one are always small. Uh, but I would not be surprised if they raised that to 10% on the uh, outlook we get about 7.30 in the morning, as you'll see. And then this is day two, a, a small slight risk on the North Carolina coast up toward uh, Virginia Beach and the Tidewater. Uh, this is the rain through Tuesday morning. This is showing rain amounts of about uh, two inches, really one to two inches up this way. Heavier totals down south, and they could see some rain on the Gulf Coast uh, uh, Sunday, but we should be dry through Sunday. But let's get in there and focus on this thing. Uh, this is the uh, model output. We peg the geek meter as we do here every day. This is the GFS, the Global Forecast System, the OZ run, valid at 1 o'clock local time this afternoon. This is at 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet up, and there's your trough. And again, there's a hint of, of a negative tilt here, which uh, often will increase the air buoyancy, the ability for air parcels to rise, the upward motion, if you will. And down at the surface at 1 o'clock, according to the... Uh, uh, GFS, that batch of storms just creeping into northwest Alabama. And I do really think we can set now the primary severe weather window still from 11 to 11, but I think the core risk will come this afternoon. Uh, let's look at the NAM. All right, this is the, the high-resolution 4-kilometer North American mesoscale model. And this is valid at 3 o'clock this afternoon, and it's got the main squall line in west Alabama at that point. Other models are faster. Uh, but again, this has been a pretty consistent model this season. And we'll have to watch for any isolated storms that form ahead of that line. And of course, you know, obviously, you know, you, you can't look at this model output and say, you know, that's exactly where these things will be. But there clearly could be some cellular discrete cells out ahead of that thing this afternoon. And we'll really have to watch those for tornado potential. But within that line, there could be strong straight line winds. Six o'clock. Main line passing through Birmingham. 9 o'clock, the model is really slow in ending this. It's still got some rain uh, 
uh, through about the eastern two-thirds of the state. And finally, by 4 a.m. tomorrow, the rain is pretty much out of here. But again, that the, the NAM is a little slower than most of the models. Thought we go to the H triple R. This one has performed quite well this season. This is valid this afternoon at one o'clock local time, and it's got the squall line pretty close to Birmingham, Huntsville, down to Birmingham and Tuscaloosa. And understand with that line, the main threat will be from strong straight line winds. Uh, and out ahead of that, again, you can see the the little cellular type storms that are over East Alabama. So as we've talked about before, we think the greatest tornado threat will be on the eastern side of the state today. But everybody has the chance of strong, maybe damaging straight line winds. Let's look at the uh, various parameters here. First off, and we're going to stay with the HRRR. This is the expected wind field at 850 millibars, the low level jet, if you will. This is about 5,000 feet off the ground. And we've got a core uh, wind speed there of almost uh, 55 to 60 knots. And again, in a setup like today, it doesn't take a lot to get that down to the surface if the air is unstable, and it is. We'll show you the instability here in just a minute. So the low-level wind fields are quite strong. This is the low-level shear. This is between the surface and one kilometer, and, and this is one of the parameters you look at for tornado formation. And really, those numbers are pretty high. I mean, we've got uh, uh, values in excess of 45 knots in advance of that uh, squall line. Uh, so the wind fields are strong. The, the low-level shear values are very adequate. And this is the instability. This is the other big factor. And uh, this is pretty aggressive. Uh, this is suggesting surface-based cape values. Uh, in some spots, in excess of 2,500 joules, this is much more aggressive than the other models that we have seen. And I will say other models are not this aggressive, but if you take this one on face value, this would certainly be supportive of a few rotating storms. And again, especially on the eastern side of the state, I would say the greatest chance of tornado activity today will be east of I-65, south of I-20. And there could be, you know, a tornado away from that area, but that's the core chance. But everybody has a chance of strong, damaging straight line winds. Timing, again, the broad window, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., but the core threat will be during the afternoon and evening hours. Uh, inevitably, some watches and warnings will be needed today, and of course, as always, we encourage everybody to be uh, close to a source of watches and warnings as they are issued. Stay with the blog. We'll update that frequently throughout the day today. All right, tomorrow, everything is gone. Uh, the sky becomes mostly sunny. It will be a much nicer day. High tomorrow should be uh, a little cooler, around 70. Uh, be a nice day. Saturday, just beautiful. We'll start the day in the 40s, the high Saturday, low 70s, uh, maybe 73 or so. Now, Sunday, all of a sudden, the GFS wants to bring in this big moisture surge from the south. And this is suggesting uh, uh, rain over the southern half of the state Sunday. Um, and if that keeps up, we'll mention a slight chance maybe Sunday evening here in this part of the state. But for now, we've got the forecast dry. We're calling it partly sunny with a high close to uh, 77 or 78. I, I think this might be overdone. I wouldn't be surprised if that goes away on the next run. Now, Monday of next week, we're kind of getting into a summer deal here. Uh, moisture, but no dynamic support for rain. Uh, so maybe a few scattered afternoon and evening showers. How many times do we say that in June, July, and August? High around 80. Same thing Tuesday, and really the same thing Wednesday. Uh, so for the first half of next week, highs, low 80s, warm, muggy, some sun, a chance of scattered mostly afternoon showers. Then Thursday, hey, a little dynamic support. Pretty, uh, pretty strong trough passing by. A deep surface low is near Cleveland. 991 millibars with a band of showers and storms coming in here. Uh, the better dynamics, the surface low is north of here, but we'll have to monitor that for signs of any severe weather as that gets closer. But that's a week out, a lot of time to watch that. Got there a few more days, April 23rd. Uh, evidence of a batch of storms coming in here. And the end of the forecast, April 26th, that would be dry 
and uh, pretty mild if that's right. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. If we have time, we'll crank out another one later today, but the weather might be active one way or the other. We encourage you to watch us on ABC 3340 on the live stream or the television side. Regular newscast this evening at 4, 5, 6, and 10. And, of course, the blog will have frequent running updates on things today, alabamawx.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. Hey, this is Ross with my partner, Bob. We have a show called Worldview Matters. And Ross, as you know, we believe that everything in life is somehow related to how people view the world around them. Our show is available on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Also available on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. 